What's up guys, Ryan here at Signature Edits and inside of this Lightroom tutorial, we are taking a look at editing a travel photo with zero presets whatsoever. So if you wanna edit along, you can even download the free raw file. Let's hit that intro and get into it. All right, so this photo was taken at Rosslyn Lake in Alberta, Kananaskis National Park, Canada. Um, you can see the world's best, most awkward model just perched out on this log. That's me, if you didn't know. <laughs> and this was actually taken um, kind of in the middle of the day, really, really harsh light, so we're gonna have to work around that a little bit. Now, if you want to actually edit along with me, you can head to signatureedits.com slash free dash raw dash photos to grab this and edit along. Okay, so all that said, we've got some harsh light, we're gonna have to fix that. So because the lighting is harsh, you've got some kind of weird color cast in the mountains that's blue up here and down here is a little bit warmer. We've also got just sort of washed out colors, to be honest. If we had shot this a little bit later in the day, the colors would have been a lot more vibrant and easier to edit, but we're gonna work with it anyways and make something. Okay, so first things first, we're just gonna correct some things, get the image sort of where it needs to be. First you correct and then you add the creative stuff. So I'm gonna warm up the white balance temperature a little bit. We're probably gonna take it towards green just a little. You can see as I'm doing that, see how magenta the mountains kind of were before? You didn't even notice it, but then when you change it, you're like, oh, that had an issue. Okay, so we've got our exposure set. We've got white balance kind of locked in. Looks okay right around there. And I'm gonna head down to my tone curve. There's a bunch of ways we could approach this. Obviously, we could just go into our contrast and lower the highlights a little, maybe raise the shadows. We could do it that way, or we could do it directly in the tone curve. Now, why would you do one over the other? One is just what you prefer. And two, if you wanna have a little bit more control of where you're adding contrast, that's where the tone curve is really handy. So I'm gonna click three times in here. That's gonna add three different points. If you don't see this, you can actually make sure you head over here and have your point curve turned on. All right, so if this is confusing to you, go ahead, check out my tone curve tutorial. But basically, I'm adding a little bit of an S curve. And then I'm gonna play around, see if the midtones look better raised up or lowered down a bit. Mm, for the sake of this, like I kind of, I dig the contrast obviously of increasing it, but by lowering it, I'm kind of getting a nice flat profile and sort of saving the mountains a little bit. So I'm gonna probably leave it somewhere around there. So here's before and here's after. You can see what a massive difference the tone curve actually can make. And that's just using the main channel. We haven't gone into the red, green or blue yet, but we'll come back there. So the next thing I'm going to focus on here is probably going to be just a little bit of corrective stuff with some adjustment layers. So I'm gonna hit K on my keyboard. That's gonna pull up an adjustment brush, or you can just head over here, click the adjustments and go create a new mask. Then I'm just going to paint, undo that. Let's hit it one more time. I'm gonna paint, but this time I'm gonna turn on auto mask and I'm gonna grab the top of the meat the top of the me, the top of these mountains, because you can see they're kind of blue compared to everything else and sort of hazy. So I'm gonna reset the brush by holding Alt on my keyboard, hit reset, hit O to hide the overlay, and then we're just going to add maybe a bit of dehaze. And you can see now they're really blue, so we'll warm up the temperature a little bit until it feels like it matches those mountains underneath. A little warmer, a little more magenta. Okay, that's pretty darn close. We could then maybe take our shadows down just a bit. Okay, somewhere around there. That's basically just getting the top of the mountain to match the bottom of the mountain. Here's without it, and here's with it. Okay, so we're not actually done yet, obviously, but we've made some progress. There's before and there's after. From here, we're just gonna play around, start doing a little bit more stylistic work. So first, I'm gonna focus in on these greens down here. So if I zoom in, we look at these greens, they're very saturated and maybe like a little bit too orangish from what I would like. So I'm going to take the yellows, take that saturation down. And you can see as I do that, it's gonna just make everything feel a little bit more cohesive, like it matches. Before we had green and yellow, now we just have more of a green. And that's just gonna feel a lot better overall. So again, before and after, right? You might dig it, in which case you can actually keep them in there. I don't care. We're gonna take the saturation, down a little bit, take the luminance of those same yellows and take them up. It's gonna add some pop. So again, here's before and here's after. And lastly, if you want to, you can play around with the hue. We could take it maybe towards orange or more towards green. What feels right to you is going to depend on your own personal taste, but I'm gonna leave it 
kind of around there. I'm going to do the same thing in the luminance with our actual greens. Take those up. I'm going to go into the saturation. We're maybe going to take that down a little bit. And then the hue, I'm going to take up towards cyan a little. Cyan a little. Okay. Before, after. So we've kind of washed it out a little bit. But we've also cleaned it up, hopefully. Now we're going to do something with these kind of purples and blues up on the mountain. Now, there's a couple different ways we could approach it. Obviously, we could take the saturation out of our blues and our purples, and that'll fix it. But it's also going to remove the blues and the purples from everything else in the image. So I'm going to hit K again on my keyboard. This time, I'm going to paint a mask on all of these mountains. Doo -doo. I'm going to reset the brush, hold Alt, click Reset. And you can see Auto Mask didn't do the best of jobs, so we'll try and clean it up a little bit. You can toggle to your eraser really quick in Lightroom just by hitting Alt on your keyboard or the Option key. So make sure your flow is up. Okay, that's a little bit better. And then we are going to take our saturation down a little bit. Warm things up ever so slightly. Maybe take the highlights down and even add a little dehaze, see how that feels. Okay, next we've got this lake in front of me and it's looking pretty desaturated, which is weird because there's this beautiful glacier water and I really want to bring that out. So I'm going to grab another adjustment brush and you guessed it, just brush on this area. We can add some blue and add some green back into the image just by hitting our temperature and adding, making it more blue, making it more green. And I'm going to have to play around with this a little bit just so it all gets blended nicely. So obviously in this section that's like way overkill. And in this section it actually could maybe do with a bit more. So I'm going to grab my effect and make it even stronger, which seems like the opposite of what I should do, I realize. And then from there, I can toggle to my eraser, turn off auto mask, take the flow of the eraser down, and then I can blend things in. So I'm just going to erase some of that green out of this spot, a little bit out of here, little by little until things feel like they match nicely. Okay, that's not bad. So let's just see, here's before and after. Definitely added some nice green to it. I could even go a little bit more on this spot here. I kind of missed it. I'll turn my flow down because I know ahead of time it's going to be too much, so. Just grab that. Okay, before, after, very nice. Okay, so. At this point, it's looking pretty good, definitely a lot better than it was when we started, at least in my opinion. However, we haven't really added any style, any pop to the image, so that's where we're going to head down to the calibration panel. We're going to play around with some different things. Let's actually set this to fill, so we're a little more zoomed in. Oh, come on now. All right, so I'm going to play around here. We're going to take our shadows, maybe take those towards green a little bit because I just like green. We're going to take our reds and just play around with the hue. Probably somewhere around there feels good. I want to be pretty careful with the reds and the oranges because that's where my jacket and my skin tones are hanging out. And if I go too far on this, it's going to feel weird. So, so far, before, after, very subtle change. Greens we can take and play around with the hue here, doing more of a take it towards cyan. And here's a little trick that I find sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. You can take your blue primary down just a little bit, and that'll give you kind of an orangish teal effect, but we're just gonna make it very subtle, and then take the saturation all the way down in the blues, and then all the way up in the greens. Sometimes this looks cool, sometimes it does not. So let's just zoom out here. Come on, fit. Okay, so here's without, and here's with. So you can see we've just added some more saturation to the blues and the greens without making it feel overpowered. Whereas if we just reset these greens and blues, you can see the difference. So that's before and that's after. 
You might like it. You might not. You do you. Okay. So we've done some work in calibration, add a little bit more pop, a little bit more color without making it hopefully feel too, too over the top. From there, I'm probably going to head up to our color grading panel. And this is where you can really add some obvious aesthetic vibes. So highlights I'm going to leave alone, actually, midtones. And then the shadows, I'm going to aim for more of like a orangish yellow. Give it sort of a vintage vibe. So if I go like way too far, you can see what kind of color I'm adding. And dial it back. Just want to add a little warmth to the image. So before, after. So instead of the lake being like this really blue, blue, now it's more of a, well, honestly, more of what a lake would look like, I think, and a little bit more vintagey vibe. And then the same thing with the highlights, we can play around. Normally I'm finding somewhere towards the warm tones is where I lean. Of course, you could try it playing around, see what works for you. Probably about the same color, to be honest. There's before and there's after on that. Okay, what else could we do? Well, we could call it a day and say, hey, that looks good to me. Or we could add a little bit more clarity and texture on our subject here. Maybe brighten them up a bit. Make sure your flow is up or else it's not going to do too much. Why didn't that work? Well, it turns out you had no flow. It's all about the flow. Okay, so our auto mask is not working at all. So a different method, we're going to hit Shift M on our keyboard. That'll make a radial filter. Drag that over yours truly and take the contrast down. This is like a mobile spotlight. Literally, I find this is the number one kind of brush setting I'm using all the time because look at this. So here's with it and there's without it. So it just brightens things up without it looking like you've brightened that area. I find it's pretty transparent. Let's navigate back to that really quick. I'm actually going to right click and duplicate it. In a theoretical world, I'll just try hitting Command C and Command V to make a copy. And now I'm going to hit O so I can see my overlay, invert it by hitting the apostrophe key on my keyboard. You can also just hit invert up here on the right hand panel. And for some strange reason, it's not showing me any areas that are not affected which is kind of weird. So let's just delete that. I guess it stacked the radio filter. So we'll make a brand new one. Hit Shift M. Honestly, new Lightroom. Sometimes not a big fan. Just saying. Okay, now we're going to hit O. And this time the filter should work the way it's meant to. Perfect. And I'm going to just play around here. Probably darken everything down. Because I can. Maybe add a little bit of dehaze to everything. Because now it's affecting the background, not so much me. Increase the highlights a little bit. I'm just adding some pop, adding some vibe. Okay, so here's before. Hit O so you can hide that overlay. Here's before that and after that. Added a bunch of pop to the image. Now, you might have thought that's too far, in which case, go ahead, dial it back. It doesn't matter to me. In fact, I'll do it anyways because I tend to over-edit everything. <laughs> that's a lesson I have learned in my years of doing this is you always want to go as far as you think looks good and then probably dial it back 20%. And if you're just starting, dial it back 50%. That's just a good rule of thumb. I'm just painting another adjustment brush on here, dialing back the highlights because that snow is a little bit blown out. And I'm probably going to add some dehaze because the dirtiness of the snow doesn't look too good. So we'll zoom in. I'll even add another brush here. Dehaze. Cool. Now, obviously, that snow is really blown out. We could try and dial our highlights back just on our main adjustments. See how that feels. Okay, so this is where we've gone from here to here. You might like it. You might think it's a little too far. You do you. Tag me at Signature Edits Co. so I can see what kind of edits you come up with. All right, let's do just one more thing. Just playing around with the tone curve for the sake of like this exercise, not because it'll necessarily perfect the image. But I am going to try and just add some yellows to the shadows, and a little bit of green to the shadows. Something like that. I'm going to 
add some luminance overall to the oranges, to the reds. And now everything's feeling like a little bit bleh. I definitely added way too much color. So I would go back and maybe remove it from the tone curve or dial back on my color grading or just dial back on the saturation here on the greens. Lots of ways to do it. I'm addressing the fact that this is not a perfect edit at this point. Um, we're just trying some different things so you can see some different techniques. So I'm going to continue raising up those greens and those yellows. There we go, we got a little bit more pop, a little bit less mud in the image. You can see the difference that makes. And from there, I think other than just dialing back on the overall saturation of those greens, because they are very intense, I'm feeling reasonably happy here. We've still got a bit of blue up in the top of the mountains. So I could go in here and just trace the top, like a so. And take the temperature, warm it up. There we go. Maybe add a little clarity. Cool. That's looking not too bad. And then, of course, just dial everything back because gone way too far. Vibrance down a little. Cool. And of course, you can also use your color grading panel to just increase and decrease the amounts of different things. So we could try taking our shadows down, mid-tones up, highlights, see what happens. Definitely, I like more of a gray sky instead of a pure white sky. So we'll stick there. So we've gone from here to here. Now there's one final thing we can do to really get the money out of this photo and that's to head over into Photoshop. So first off, I'm gonna add a little bit of noise reduction maybe and just a tiny bit of green. Okay, something like that. And then I'm going to export this photo. I've already done it just to save some time and head over into Photoshop. So from there, pull up your photo, grab it in, and this is something I've started doing on all of my shots. Originally, it was ironic. I was doing it just to make the YouTube thumbnail. And then I realized, wait, this makes the image way better. So what you do, you grab your image, you drag it in, and now you've got this image inside of Photoshop. Then we basically just copy the background. So you literally hit Command C and Command V, or you can, first off, you can have to double click it, hit enter, and then you can go down and select duplicate layer. That's another way to make a copy. Okay, once you've got that copy, head over to where it says normal, click that, and then click on multiply. Just like that, we've added a ton of contrast to the image. Obviously, this is way overdone, so what we have to do is just erase the parts that don't look good. So up here in the sky, that's kind of weird because we've got a lot of grain being multiplied, so we're just going to dial that back. And what I've got here is the eraser. You hit E on your keyboard to pull up the eraser. And I've taken the flow down to around 11%, 20%, whatever. And then your actual brush settings, set the hardness all the way down to zero. And on your keyboard, using the keys next to your P key, it's uh, like a square bracket either way. That'll make your brush bigger and smaller, okay? So from there, we're just going to erase this layer where it's too much. So I might even pull that up, take the flow up all the way just so you can see and hopefully it's going to do what I want it to do. Okay, so that's better. It's not completely gone because some of that is just green that Lightroom added. Now I'm going to take my flow back down and selectively remove it from the areas that are just a little bit too much. So probably on these mountains, just certain sections that are looking too dark, too contrasty. Right in here. Maybe there, got this tree obviously. And then these trees here, I'm realizing now I forgot to <laughs> replace. There's some guy in the background of this photo. Should have caught that, but I didn't. So you can definitely grab that in Lightroom. Erase off of these trees because that just looks super weird and way overdone. And then probably the lake just a little where it's super dark. Okay, so from there, we can take our opacity down until it feels nice. Something like that. So here's before 
and here's after. We've added a ton of pop to the image without it looking like we just jacked up the contrast. So that is a little secret weapon that you can try next time you're editing an image in Satellite Room. From there, hit Shift Command Option S. That's gonna let you export your photo in a really web-friendly size. You can see it's still nice and big. You set whatever image size you want. For this particular video, we'll just save it exactly as is. As is. And we're good. That is the finished edit for you. We took it from here to here. Now, if this video was helpful, can you do me a big favor? Hit the like button, make sure to subscribe, and leave a comment below. Those are the three things you can do to repay me if this video was helpful for you and you got some value out of it. Let me know in the comments what was the most helpful thing, the most helpful trick, or a different trick or tip you would say, hey, Ryan, try this next time because that would have been way better than what you just did. Because honestly, I learned just as much from you as you hopefully learned from me. That's how we grow as a community. So if you want some free presets, I will leave them in the description, but we've just seen you don't need presets to create great edits. You just need to figure out and take your time and explore Lightroom, okay? I will see you in the next video. In the meantime, create something awesome. Tag me in your edits, at Signature Edits Co. See you in the next video. Peace.